Welcome everyone, this is the Platform Special Interest Group. It's the 27th of August, 2020. Um, we're recording this session. It will be available on the Platform SIG playlist. Uh, agenda review, uh, adopt OpenJDK for Docker on Alpine is a topic. We wanted to give a final status report on that. Then adopt OpenJDK 8 for Docker on Debian and CentOS. Uh, also, I wanted to add a topic, which is the retirement schedule for Debian 8, or Debian, no, no, not 8, it's Debian 9 in our Docker entities. And we'll talk that briefly. And plugin installation manager in Docker images. Uh, Tim, with you here, would you be okay if we put that as you, you to tell us some Give us a brief about it. Yep. Great. Okay. And then update center improvements. And that one, Tim, if you're available, would also be great to have you. You've got much deeper understanding of it than I do, and uh, but we'd love to highlight it. Yep. Any other topics we should put on the agenda? Okay. And let's go ahead and go. So adopt open JDK 8 for Docker on Alpine is done, uh, delivered uh, in Jenkins 2.235.5 and Jenkins 2.200, I believe 53. Uh, that, that change switches to Alpine 3.12 and adopt open JDK. 8U262. Uh, and we were previously, previously Alpine 3.9 and 8U212. So, and I haven't seen any outrage or serious irritation at that transformation. Alex, have you had anyone complaining to you about breaking something? Oh, well, I actually wonder if how many people are using that image. <laughs> okay, well, and that's a that's a good that's a good topic for topic for my action item on a jet to get us the rules for operating system support because we may want to just consider dropping Alpine completely. Good. Okay. All right. Let me use Alpine. Don't drop my Alpine. Oh, you use Alpine, Tim? Oh, wait, let me check. Maybe we don't. My experience with Alpine okay. was was not so great. I kept Actually, no, I think we dropped we dropped Alpine because we used JDK eleven. Yeah, no, we used we used the JDK eleven tag. Ah, right. Okay. We used to use Alpine though. Huh. Okay. Well, that's that's okay. Good to hear that somebody was using it. That's that's a win. There was a period where um, it was being shipped, or something derived from Alpine was being shipped by Cloudbees, but I think they found that to be particularly painful and shipped it away. Okay, so adopt open JDK 8 for Docker on Debian and CentOS. So here we've got a PR in progress, right, Alex? We have a PR for the Debian portion, but for CentOS, ah. we're using. Um, so we're, we're still just installing through YUM. Okay. So I guess what we should determine is whether we want to install a specific version of Java or um, if we just want to continue to rely on the package manager for CentOS. Yeah, and I thought that, I, at least for me, I like the, I like the specific version of Java. From adopt. However, I guess that that may only work for Debian. I don't know if adopt is providing a, a CentOS base image at all. They may not provide an image, but they may provide an RPM. Ah, uh, okay. I'll, I'll right. look into that. You can assign that to me. Okay, great. Thanks. 
Okay. Next topic was retirement schedule for Debian 9 in our images. So this one is not a pressing one right now, but Debian has announced or has stated on their website that um, sometime in 2021 will release their next version. And the dates they were showing was like March or later. And when they do that, their policy is that the, the, the old stable becomes unsupported. So Debian 9 will be unsupported at that time. So by then, I think we need to have transitioned either to Debian 10 or to the new version, which will, I assume, be numbered Debian 11 Bullseye. So for me, that fits within the operating system support chip that I've got to get out and um, just the proposal of how to manage it. It's another, another instance of what are the rules we should be applying to decide which operating system can support. Any other questions there or conversation there? I don't know if it's, but it's not specific to this, but um, I know Daniel has um, voiced his concern about the number of images we publish and having to wait for publishing all of those images for security releases. So I'm wondering if um, we want to do something where we have an official set of images that are the like, main image of Jenkins we publish, and then ancillary ones that um, we do publish, but are not like the main support ones. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, so still leave them in the in the Jenkins CI, but, but acknowledge we are not going to claim official support for these? Yeah, more like so the- Would you support? envision I mean, it seems though that that, would, that may still cause Daniel heartache because he'll get people who are badgering him saying, I want this security fix on this thing that is not officially supported. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, but this, I think it's a worthwhile thing to consider. Adopt Open JDK does something like that, right? Where? Yeah. I think it's just to speed up the publishing, paralyze it. It all takes the same amount of time to publish. Do we, we currently build them all on Docker Hub at the moment, is it? Uh, no. I thought, I thought we actually built them all on our own infrastructure because the Docker Hub build process wasn't doing what we needed, at least back when we were evaluating that. Is it on Trust yeah, SPI? Um, yes, for the, for the official Jenkins repo, it's untrusted. Um, for the, we, yeah. we do. Yeah, I couldn't find it last time I was looking. Yeah. All right, so that those are factors to consider in getting that jet prepared. All right. Anything else on the retirement schedule for operating systems or general operating system support? Um, I do have a PR that um, switches our main image to um, Buster when oh, it good. switches to, to adopt OpenJDK. So um, that would switch the main image to Buster from Stretch. Excellent. Okay, so that would that would address the specific question on on uh, Debian nine. Good. All right.
Next topic then, Plugin Installation Manager in Docker Images. So Tim, you want to give us a brief overview? <laughs> Sorry, Tim, my timing is especially bad. That was completely unacceptable. That's fine. Uh, yep. Um, so it's in the latest weekly. Um, replaces the install plugin study stage script um, with the plugin installation manager CLI, which was a GSOC 2019 project. Um, and it's had a number of improvements over the last few months. Um, um, the biggest new feature is probably um, being able to automatically update uh, your plugin file um, with the CLI, uh, which saves 20 to 30 minutes of tedious reviewing um, and finding new versions to just a, like a script that takes one to two seconds to run. So and it updates just, the plugins.txt file with the version numbers inside the text file. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and also it also works in the YAML file as well. Um, and it can output it to your console as well. It's just like a human readable if you want that. Um, if you just want to see what the new versions are. Um, it's in the latest weekly version only, so 2.254. Um, and it'll be in the next LTS um, in, in a couple of weeks, I guess. Um, Maybe we should do an announcement on either the dev list or the users list that we're going to start deprecating the old methods because there's still a, a really old method plugins to this age that is in the image that we should remove. Well, and, and that I think is is there was a full replacement soon topic that was brought up in the infra meeting. Tim, do you want do you have any details you want to share on that? I think um, Daniel Beck was describing. Was one thing, so Daniel Beck wanted. I think there's a pull request open which um, makes the install plugin script more compliant with the update center. Um, it uses less uses the directory structure less. I'm guessing versions. Um, I don't think it's not 100% correct, but it's enough that I think Daniel can retire some of the update center lines. Um, I think it might still rely on. Uh, I, th I, th I think it's yeah. So I think there's a pull request that Daniel just wanted merged. Um, it's open against the install plugin script. I don't think it's Daniel. I think Alex might have opened the pull request. Ah, uh, okay. Just let, let me put it that way. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, Alex. No, that's correct. And yeah, it's, it's just kind of a band aid. We definitely yeah. want to move to plugin installation manager. So the idea, Alex, and the install plugins change is, is a, an immediate workaround that would allow Daniel to continue advancing the update center improvements. Is that the idea? And then plugin installation manager will eventually replace install met plugins completely. Yes. Now I don't know how to do the notification thing here. How do we, how do we get the message out to our Docker image users? Could have a deprecation it, warning or a, or even just a, hey, try, <clears throat> just, hey, do you want to try the new, the, the new plugin manager CLI? It has automated update support and, um, and is better tested. <laughs> yeah. Next generation CLI. Do you think it's enough to add a warning to install plugins.sh? Or do you think people actually will see that? I, I would put it at the beginning and the end. People might see it at yeah. the end. They probably won't see it at the beginning. That's a good idea. Um, I'll, I can take a action item to create a PR for that. Great, great. Well, and it feels like this is one where we would we would benefit by some additional notice, some additional either a 
uh, a reminder to a blog post or something like it. I can certainly do some social media things if that would help. Yeah. Yeah, I think the blog post might be good. Just to kind of give an overview of the tool because it can be very useful outside of Docker as well. Okay. So as a, as a way to get a separate voice doing that, Tim, you're about to go on vacation. It would be okay if I offered the blog post, uh, try to I squeeze it in. Be my I, guess, Mark. <laughs> I, I doubt it will be ready before you leave on vacation, but I also doubt that if, if you were to take the action that you would somehow magically do it before you left on vacation, that's not gonna happen. So I'm not doing it before going on vacation. <laughs> Great. So let me let me put that on. Put that on on there, and uh, I'll review. I'll rely on reviewers to correct me if I say something too bold or not bold enough about eventual obsolescence. It certainly won't have any timeline timeline on it, but rather stating that we intend. Actually, maybe this is the place to highlight the update center. Uh, has uh, is using HTTPS. And should it also highlight an invitation to uh, add more mirrors? Are we at the point where we're ready to recruit more mirrors? Tim, what's your sense there? Is it premature? Should we wait till you get back before we consider promoting people to become more mirror sites? No, I, um, definitely, I think it's definitely good to promote it. More mirrors, the better, I'd say. Okay, so I may, I may ping, um, I may ping Daniel back to see if he'd like to be involved in, in contributing to that blog post because it's, I think the HTTP to HTTPS transition is an important thing to highlight for people. And this is a good excuse to say, hey, look, it's, this is, we've gotten smarter about what we're doing with the update standard. Okay, anything else on plugin installation manager and Docker images? Nope. Last topic I had was update center improvements. Tim, you want to take that topic? Yep, sure. Um, I mean, we kind of covered it the last couple of minutes, but it's um, enabling HTTPS for plugins end to end. Um, previously, Mirrors was on HTTP, um, and Update Server also served HTTP links um, in some cases. Um, but now Update Center is always serving HTTPS links, although you can still access it initially on HTTP, um, which we'll hopefully remove at some point. Um, and that's due to Java issues with cross protocol and your browser will upgrade seamlessly HTTP, HTTPS, but uh, Java won't do it without a lot of extra code that isn't in there currently. Um, uh, so yeah, that's one. So end-to-end -end SSL. Um, which was gained from switching from mirror brain to mirror bits. Uh, all of our mirrors support HTTPS, and so any new mirrors will need to support it as well. Um, the other bit was, um, I think, um, it was about plugins being available immediately um, after release. So previously, it was about an hour to two hours after release, you would quite likely get 404s. Uh, and it'll be impossible to install a plugin. So you installed the get client plugin, you've got 300,000 instances running it, but for the next two hours, it's impossible to install Git. So basically it's impossible to install, possible to start a new Jenkins because um, it's dependent on by so many things. Um, but so now it's available immediately. Um, we push it to both Azure, um, which is our fullback storage and uh, to the OUS, SU, which is the Oregon State University mirror, um, and it's available in those two places immediately as part of the update center push. This is made possible by Daniel um, adding a new feature to the update center to, um, to just add a new file, which includes all of the recent releases for the last three hours, um, and we only sync those on every push. Um, we have one complication that we need to keep an eye on is that Originally, our fullback was something called archives.jenkinsci.org. Um, and so that's, a, so we, we currently only mirror um, Jenkins Wars and not sure about plugins, but definitely Jenkins War 
um, that have been released in the last year. And we include everything on archives.org. But the machine is incredibly slow. Um, and it was okay for war files for people that weren't updating. Um, but there's an issue with Mirabits where it doesn't seem to pick up plugin releases. Well, it just doesn't notice something in the mirror for about an hour and a half. It's got two stages where it does a local refresh and sync where it seems to take about 15 minutes to notice that the plugin is on Mirabits. And then it will hash it and it will look to see if it's available anywhere. Um, and then it does, re it does regular r -syncs, full r -syncs of every mirror to see whether the versions have changed. Um, those seem to happen roughly every half hour or so, but it seems to take at least an hour to an hour and a half before it notices that it's on mirrors, even though it's there pretty much immediately. Um, so initially we're using our own bandwidth, um, which is something that we really do need to fix. Um, whether it's upgrading archives, whether it's um, fixing mirror bits, well, improving mirror bits to allow us to tell it that a specific thing has just been updated. So with mirror brain that did have that capability. So there was a specific MB scan and you could pass the file path. And so with mirror brain you could, so that was what was done during security releases. So security releases didn't have that issue. Um, and just, it allows an immediate sync. Um, but yeah, Mirabits is miss missing that feature. So possibly we could contribute it. I, I asked no I see, but I didn't get a response and I haven't had time to raise an issue. Great. Now, in terms of one of my worries was Azure bandwidth cost. Uh, should I just be looking at the Azure cost estimation console to, to, to be monitoring, hey, have we gone off the, off the scales with bandwidth costs? Yeah. Yeah, probably cost management is the best place. I mean, I'm looking at directly at the storage account, which shows the amount of bandwidth. Um, and I was calculating it based off the pricing. Um, let me just have a quick look. I think cost analysis for the last. Uh -huh. Great. Okay. Now I saw also that you've done an update to, to refresh the GOIP data. Has that actually been applied or is that still a, a pull request? Yeah, that's, so that's been applied. Um, I, I raised an issue on Olivia. So it's, it's in Olivia's um, uh, GitHub account is the Meribits Docker image we used. Um, I raised an issue there that we, we never updated it. <laughs> and Olivia decided to reply. <laughs> Oh, good. Okay. And he told me that uh, we should just um, run it regularly from Infra Jenkins um, and update the image. But I think I found a better way. I don't really want to have to, man to have manually approve and merge PRs for it all the time because it was a waste of our time. Um, and I found a, a GOIP update um, Docker image, which is an official image that they publish, um, which will just and you can pass it an argument which is how often you want it to refresh. Um, and it will just, it just updates it for you. I added it to another container and I mounted the um, GOP data in both containers. Um, and so it runs every 24 hours now. And um, at least it's, up, it's updated at least once, let's say that. So previously it was January was when it was last built. Um, and the last modified date is now uh, August. Great, excellent, thank you. And that was so someone, so someone raised an issue in IRC saying that um, the data, well, they're us, they said they were going to a mirror that it shouldn't be, and that their GOP data used to be wrong and it was fixed at some point. So and that led us to, oh, yeah, it hasn't actually been updated in a while. I assumed that it was being updated by Cron, but it wasn't. Great. That is, that is excellent. Thank you very, very much for that. Any questions from anyone on the Update Center improvements? I was, I was delighted to have pushed a new version of the Git, Git plugin and had no complaints about being unavailable and delighted when I updated a plugin yesterday morning and it had only released 51 minutes earlier and I saw no, no problem there either. So, 
Very nice. Thanks. Any other topics we need to discuss today? All right, that covers it then. Recording will be posted. Uh, I'll update the action item list after the meeting to be sure that it records action items we added to the session. Thanks very much. Uh, Vivek, was there anything that you had topic that you needed to add while you were here? Okay. Thanks, everybody. Recording will be posted.